Good morning, Mount Church. Naeem Fazel here. Glad to be back with you guys. I got to tell you, thank you so much uh, for the support. Last time I was there, you guys, some of you guys bought my book, uh, got some love. Thank you so much. So glad to be back with you the first Sunday of the year. And today, I want to talk to you about the power of a word. A word. Like, for example, um, what would be the word to describe Christmas? This past Christmas, what was the word for you? For some of you, it might be good, right? It was a solid good, good. Maybe it's uh, the word um, amazing. Like it, was, it was amazing. Happy for you. Uh, maybe it's done. Like I'm over it. It's done. It's over. Thank goodness. Thank you, Jesus. It's over. Uh, maybe for some of you, it was like stressful. Maybe that's the word. Uh, others of you, maybe it was just magical, magical. You know, I remember um, my first cruise, my first cruise, uh, uh, my wife and I, we went, uh, our, our, our son was about two years old, and the word that comes to my mind to describe that first cruise, by the way, also the last cruise, was cursed. Yes, yes, cursed is the word that comes to my mind. Here, here's why, okay? So my father-in-law um, uh, took us on this cruise. He paid for it and was so grateful that he did that. But we walked in and the first day I realized something was off because, because there was no childcare for our almost two a year old son. There was like a cutoff point or something like that and he was not going to get in. Now, mind you, this was like a five nights cruise kind of a thing. And so now we're stuck. We had already planned if those of you who have kids, you know you plan on a cruise and now you're stuck with the fact that you're going to have to hang out with your kid the entire time. No child care provided because he, that was the issue. Then we figured out that our niece who went with us could figure it out. But guess what? After the first two hours on the cruise, she took off. We never saw her again. I still don't know where she is. Still don't know where she is, okay? She took off. So we got, we were like, okay, we're going to make this work. It's cruise. It's, I, like, we're not paying for it. It was going to be awesome. We thought it was going to be awesome. But then, 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 here's what happened. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go jump into this pool that was on the, the boat, like on the ship. I was like, this is awesome. I jumped in. I kid you not. I opened my eyes. I don't know why, in the water, and my contacts, one contacts, not two, one of them floated out floated out. Then I realized I had not bought any more contacts. So now I'm blind. I, and I got to put my glasses on the entire time. This was day one. Cursed, my friends. That was the word. Cursed. It gets worse. The room situation. Oh yeah. There was a mix up in the room situation. We got, I don't know, not the correct room. And uh, it was not a good situation with a toddler. It was not good at all. And we thought, you know what? We can still make this work. Come on. We're on a cruise. But friends, oh, it got worse. Let me tell you. Uh, the, like, the next day, we didn't see my father-in-law. Like, we didn't see him all day. We're like, where is he? Okay, finally, uh, one day passed, and so we go to his room, and he's in his bed, and we look at his face. Friends, this is scary. He got uh, cerebral palsy, which is a mimic of a stroke. His face was drooping. Oh, yeah. And we're like, what just happened? So then uh, the medical uh, team found out about this because he wasn't going to tell anybody about this. They were like, okay, he got a mini stroke or something. Their first protocol is to get him off the ship. So they're like, the next whatever we're docking, we are taken off. Like, you are getting off of the ship. They took him in a, in a helicopter off the ship, and then we met him at a port. I don't even remember where. It was nuts. Then, there, so we go to port. We don't know where he is. Then they, we find him, eventually find him, and then guess what happens? We come back. Now, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, they're gone, and we've got, my niece is missing. I don't know where she is, right? Having fun. We've got our son, uh, my sister-in-law is there, and the next day she gets food poisoning. <laughs> this is amazing. We started, we started the first night with all of us at dinner. We ended the night, and it was just me, Ashley, and my son. And then he started to cry, and then my wife started to cry, and I was like, no, only one person can cry <laughs> at one time. Like, this is, this is not going to happen. Cursed is the word. I got to tell you, I've not been back. No, never been back to a cruise. People invite me all the time. I'm like, nope, 
no, 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 no. It's, it's the word. It's that word, man. So I can't get over it because I have it I'm stuck in my mind. Now, let me ask you this, okay? Let me ask you, what if God wanted to give you a word? Because a word has a power to do so many things. Like when you think about even organizations, um, they can, it, it, a word can describe a, what an organization does. Like, for example, Disney has one word. Right now, they're really hot on this word, and that's the word happiness. Everything they do is about happiness. Their employees know that, all, that it doesn't matter what you have to do, you make your guest happy. Happiness, that's one word. See, one word has the power to actually define uh, values. It, it, it truly does. It has the word, it has a, the ability to really like to clarify values, uh, to unleash potential, to direct re energy and resources, and to prolong like persistence and courage. One word, when you know you got to do this, could it be possible that God wants to give you a word for 2022? Could God say, okay, I'm gonna, I, want, I want to d d drop one word in your, into your soul. One word if, for not just your soul, but for, your, for the direction of your life, for the, uh, the, the health of your soul. Could God give you a word? Should you lean in and go, okay, what is that word? Maybe the word is to lean in. I'm not quite sure. But what it would look like for you and I to spend just some time talking about the power of word and then praying about, God, give me a word. Say something to me that will direct the course of this next year. Let me jump into uh, a passage of scripture where it reminds us the power of a word. So this is in Matthew chapter 14. 14, okay? What did I say? 14. Chapter 14, and it's verses 25 to 32. This is a story, profound story, but this is how it goes. It says, shortly uh, before dawn, Jesus went out to them. Now, now what, what's happening here? Well, the, the, Jesus and his disciples are not together. They're on a boat, and when the, the writer starts talking about, we went out to them, it's kind of a crazy scenario. What does he say? Well, he went out to them walking on the lake, which obviously all of us do, right? Yeah. Okay, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they crowd, cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And then, then, this is the word he got. He got the word, come, which is the word bo in Hebrew. He says, come, he said. Then Peter, uh, uh, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind was uh, the wind, he, which, which by the way, he saw the wind, which is interesting, right? He saw the wind, okay? He was afraid and began, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And then when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So what is going on here? So many things. First of all, you have the scenario where, there, where, where there's a sort of a storm hap brewing and they're on this lake and you have God himself walking towards uh, the disciples. And, and the first thing they think is he's a ghost, which I, I think it's pretty interesting because I think in the middle of our storm in life, God sometimes seems like a ghost. Like you can't really recognize God. Right now, you might be like going through something and you're like, I, you know, I, I, I was hoping that this new year, the second day, um, everything would change. But you know this and I know this. That the new year, the date changes, but you're the same person. And you have the same crisis, the same situations going on, the same season in a sense in your life. And so you don't know where God is. And here, they didn't know that it was God himself walking. Jesus was walking to them. He, saw, he looked like a ghost. And then they were afraid. They're afraid. But then Peter starts a conversation, which he always does with Jesus, right? And he goes, okay, if you, are, if you are really him, tell me. Give me a word. Give me. Tell me to come. And the, the word is come. Come. 
So like I mentioned, the word bo, and I hope I'm saying this correctly in Hebrew, it's interesting because bo hine is the male kind of uh, word for to come. The word go, very interestingly enough, and I don't know how this works in Hebrew, is also the same word to go and to come, which is profound because it's kind of like the same idea of the word found in Exodus when Jesus, I mean, sorry, when God tells uh, Moses to go, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. It's the same word. It's like a, it, 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 that word has so much power. It, it has a power to, in one sense, to give you permission to do something. Then also, like, the, the power to do it, and then a, then a promise to accompany it. I think sometimes God gives us a word. I think it has all of those things. I think maybe God wants to give you a word that will, one, give you permission, in one sense, set you free. The other, it'll give you power. That word will give you power to strengthen you and expand the, your imagination where you go, oh, how am I going to accomplish this? Maybe he's going to give you the power to, in fact, do what he's calling you to do. And then maybe for some of you, the word will also give you a promise. It's a word that says, hey, if you step out, if you do this, you know I've got you. You see, when Jesus told uh, Peter to come, I wonder if he was going, saying, Peter, come to me, but you're going to go out and change the world. With you coming to me, you're going to go out to the rest of the world. As he gets closer and closer, he begins to sink, which is interesting because you feel like sometimes, some of us, you feel close to God, but yet you feel like you're struggling with doubt. See, sometimes the closer we are to God, the more we have doubts about him for some reason. The closer we are to him, we, we struggle with our faith and his faith, his will and our will, what we see and he sees, and then we, we, we succumb to doubt, which is interesting because you think people who have deep faith, people who are so close to God, um, don't doubt at all. But here you see that as, Jesus, as Peter is far away, he doesn't doubt, but he, as he gets closer, he begins to doubt. This is profound to me. And then when Jesus picks him up, he goes, you have little faith, which again, that expression there is this big idea of when Jesus said, hey, 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 this is you, all you need is a mustard seed of faith. Now, must, the mustard seed is not the smallest seed by no means, but Jesus was illustrating that you just have to have little faith, just your little faith. And I wonder if he was like, hey, you have little faith, like I'm proud of you. I, think, I don't think he was saying, oh, I can't believe you didn't have enough faith to walk on water. No, that's not true at all. Because see, none of the disciples did. He walks on water, comes to him, and then as soon as he's about to reach Jesus, loses it. And then what do you think the conversation was as he picked him up and then they walked back to the boat? What's the conversation that's going on there? Man, so much. I wonder if the conversation had something to do with this idea of what Jesus said, come. Because all he heard was, come, come. And he, and he reacted to that. Because like I said again, that word in itself had, had permission, it had, it had power and a promise attached to it. Could God want you to lean in the first Sunday and just get a word? What if you're looking at him in the middle of your storm? Maybe you're looking at him in the middle of whatever you're going through right now, and you're going, God, just say, just, just tell me. Give me a word. Tell me. Tell me. I'm listening. It's hard to listen. I'm listening. I'm listening. And maybe he would say to you, give you a word that will hold you up. But more than that, it would, it would be the value that you live by this this next year. It will be the direction you, uh, that, that navigates you. It will be the word that helps you course through and makes decisions in your life. It will be the word to unleash some potential in you that, man, you've just allowed insecurity to imprison. What could be that word? What could be that word for you? Man, that would be interesting, right? 
there was a word that was given to Joshua. You remember that? It was kind of a phrase, but here's the word that was given to Joshua. Joshua 1.9 it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? I still considered uh, strong and courageous one word, by the way. Anyways, he says, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Man. What could God be asking you to accomplish? What could God be asking you to attempt? See, I love this passage because it reminds us that God says, hey, the promised land is not just the promised land. The promised land is every step you take. See, you step onto the promise because you've been given the power and the permission. Like you and I have to understand that God's telling them, hey, I want you to be strong and courageous. I want you to move forward in life. And some of us feel like we're paralyzed. What would you attempt? What would you dare attempt this coming year? Because you heard God say, be strong and courageous. I want you to do this. Persist. Go for it. I want you to do this. What is that word for you? I remember... uh, um, I remember when God gave me a word, and it was, it was actually the word was, it was like, I think the first word that really resonated with me, and that was, ask her, ask her. Now, some of you guys are thinking, oh, he's talking about Ashley's wife, ask her to marry you. No, that wasn't it. The first time I heard that was actually in terms of my sister. No, I did not ask my sister to marry me. Calm down. Okay, that was not it. No, it was Obia, and I. And if you read my book, maybe you you know about it. But she, uh, my brother, came to faith first, and then I did. But then the next year, um, my sister came to the states. So you know the story. You know, I'll, I'll try to fill you in a little bit. But basically, when I finally did come to the states, um, it, I had been here for one year, and uh, my sister, who's uh, one year younger than me, got accepted to a college, to the same to the college that I was. In, in South Carolina. It's called Ch- College of Charleston. So she comes over, and we're pretty excited about this because she was the first woman in our family to go to college. And then also in the States, unheard of. So she comes that very night. I mean, we pick her up from the airport. That very night, she asked me about my faith. Like, why? Because she knew that my brother uh, had become a, uh, a Christian, and she was just wondering about me. And I was like, uh, well. And so we didn't, uh, well, we, before we went to bed that night, I was like, okay, well, let's talk. And so I told her my conversion story. Now, for those of you who have not heard it, you might want to go back, listen to my message a couple of months ago. But I talked about how I met Jesus in my room, and, and uh, it was kind of a really uh, a complicated Crazy story. But anyways, um, so I told her that story. And uh, right when I told her, she froze up, started crying. I mean, she was just, uh, she was acting really strange. Basically, she couldn't believe what I had done, and she stopped talking to me. She stopped talking to me for three weeks or more. She just would, I didn't exist. And I was like, I don't know what had just happened here. I just told you how I came to Christ. She did not want anything to do with me, and she didn't talk to me. She talked to my older brother, which, if you don't know my story, he came to Jesus first. He's the reason why this all started, I think. So she should not talk to him. But anyways, she didn't talk to me. So for weeks on end, here my sister, first time to the U.S., I haven't seen her in a year or more, and she's not talking to me. And it got worse and worse. I was like really having a hard time with this. I remember, I remember one night thinking, God, Jesus, if, if, if you told, I mean, I know you, your, your scriptures say that you got to love you more than, than brother or sister and father or mother, but this is terrible. I, I don't know if I can do this. This is, this is seriously hard. And three weeks passed, and all, throughout those times, she got introduced to Jesus, like as in, People talked to her about it, invited her to things and all those, but she didn't talk to me at all about any of this. And so one night we're at Applebee's out of all the restaurants in the world, we're at Applebee's and it's like a Saturday night and uh, I'm sitting across from her. We just ordered food and I get the word. The word is ask her, ask her. I'm like, ask her what? Like, Ask her to go on a walk with you. And I'm like, we just sat down for dinner. We just ordered, like, what, and we got friends there. And she's not been talking to me. I'm like, she's not even going to respond. So I, in my head, I'm like, 
I feel like God saying, ask her, ask her. Finally, I did. I asked her, and she said yes. I couldn't believe it. I mean, we hadn't talked in weeks, right? So we get up, and everybody else is like at the table are going, what's going on? I'm like, hey, we'll be back. I'm just going to go for a walk. We walk outside. She starts crying uncontrollably, friends, out of her mind, sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. We're walking down the street, and it's the worst thing, honestly, for me, because I'm like, you know what? People are looking at me going, what did you do to her? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. And so I'm embarrassed. We're walking down the streets. It's, it's downtown uh, it's Saturday night, it's crowded, and I'm like, I'm paranoid because I've got this lady, this woman, my sister, crying uncontrollably. I'm like, oh, what to do? And I see this alleyway, yeah, alley, and I go, hey, let's go there, it's safe. And I go there, and I go, what's going on? And she starts talking to me about what's going on in her life, and, and God, and her struggle, and this and that, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And then God leads me to pray with her, and she comes to faith in Jesus. That night, I mean, it was, I mean, there's a lot of details to that, but I'm like, what in the world? We come back to the restaurant, and I'm like, uh, and they're like, where have you been? Where have you been? And I'm like, uh, it's all good. It's all good. And I turn to my brother, and I go, she's in. And he was like, what? And man, it was amazing that night. What a high. But man, it wouldn't have started with me not being obedient to the word, the phrase, ask her. Maybe God's depositing something uh, in you right now, a phrase, a phrase. And I don't know what that phrase is. I don't know what that word is, but man, does it have the power to give you life. Here, John 6, Jesus turns to his 12 and asks them, um, uh, hey, are you, are you going to leave? Because he gives them a word and it's a strong word. And Peter replies, he says, Lord, to, wh- where, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. See, some of you, some of you are stuck. You're just, you're stuck. And you know more than I know why. Some of you are, you you, you just feel helpless. I'm not quite sure what happened. I know, but you feel like all hope is gone. There's no, there's no real, I don't know, there's no real way you can get out of this. Some of you, you feel like you kind of walked away. You kind of walked away from the faith a little bit and you tuned in and you're just wondering what's going to happen, but you, you just, you don't know. You know, you just don't know. Man, what if one word, one word um, could set you free? One word could, like I said, could unleash potential, could direct, could, could break, um, break away the, the stuff around your potential. Like what, what could be that word? Psalm 107 says this. He sent his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. So as we close this morning, what is that word? Because I know this, that word will go out. And like the psalmist said, it, it has the potential to heal. And I believe it, it, it can heal your past. It can, it can heal your present. I think it can heal your mind, your physical body, your perception, your identity. It can heal the insecurity in your life. It can bring a healing and a wholeness to you. Friends, the word that you need to press in, lean in, seek after will give you, man, it, it, it will give you permission. It'll give you It'll give you power, and it comes with a promise. So my question now is, what will you dare attempt this year, which you never did, you've never done? That's my prayer for us. Let me pray for you. Lord God, thank you so much. This is the first Sunday. God, is signif- it's significant. So I just pray, God, for some of us who feel like We can never hear you. I pray for just the supernatural ability for us to hear you. Some of us feel like we're so far away. We have wandered off. We've, but God, you're so close. You just, we just turned around and you're there. God, you have sent your word and you have healed us. Your word has the power to bring eternal life 
into our souls. God, I pray that we would lean in, seek after, and find the word that you've given us. So God, I pray, regardless what we do, I take the words from Joshua that says, let's be strong and courageous. God, I pray that we would be strong and courageous because you go before us. You go with us. God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.